strangers where I don't belong. I'm not that strong. It's nice to know that the something I can turn to. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Our program is ready to begin. We ask that you please make your way into the arena and take a seat. Once again, our program is ready to begin. Thank you.
Jupiter and Mars In other words Hold my hand In other words Baby, kiss me Fill my heart with song And let me sing Let me sing forevermore You are all I long for All I worship and adore In other words Please be true In other words In other words Jupiter and Mars In other words Hold my hand In other words Baby, kiss me Fill my heart with song And let me sing forevermore
song something from my group. Thank you so much.
Welcome as a Mara guest. Our show is about to begin.
Please welcome our top tier loyalty guest, J.R. Paget and Mrs. Francine Paget, who have sailed over 580 nights with Azamara. The executive committee of Azamara Onward. Staff captain, Daniela Epolach. Chief engineer, Stenko Ryach. Hotel Director Elizabeth Vogel. Human Resources Manager Louise Wilson. And Azamara Executive Leadership and Sycamore Partners. Today's ceremony, Onwards Cruise Director, Eric De Grey. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the christening of our very own beautiful Azamara Onward! And the crowd went wild! <clears throat> well, it is indeed a great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, and honor to be, have been selected for this evening's uh, performances and this beautiful ceremony uh, as your host this evening. Uh, First of all, I'd just like to say that this ship is a symbol that marks a new beginning for Azamara, and we are so thrilled about this. Not only are we now an independent cruise company, but we also have a beautiful new ship, and that ship will allow us to bring our guests, you, our guests, to even more destinations and smaller ports that only small ships can visit. When selecting this unique name, we realized our fourth ship will mark the start of a new adventure and therefore wanted the name to celebrate the bright future ahead for the Azamara brand and our guests. The name Azamara Onward represents moving forward in space or time. It is meant to evoke feelings of resilience, positivity, 
and the endless possibilities of the future. As a whole, the name reflects the brand's trajectory and journey to the next chapter. Yes, I said journey. <laughs> it was my home for 12 years. We're going to do a little toast, ladies and gentlemen. And if I can just get you to raise your glasses with me, there's no better toast than what the Irish would put forward, so here we go. There are good ships, and there are wood ships, ships that sail the sea. But the best ships are friendships, and may they always be. Cheers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in order to welcome our newest ship and to commence our christening ceremony, we'd like to introduce to you this evening in our opening performance with a unique aerial ballet for a moment of grace and elegance reflective of our ship.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Godmother procession. Here they come, our wonderful Godmother, ladies and gentlemen, Beth Santos. She is the founder and CEO of Wonderful. The president of Azamara, Carol Cabezas. And the master of the Azamara onward, Captain Carl Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, our next performance is our children's choir. A cool viande is made up of young boys and girls aged 8 to 16 and recruited through auditions. Attached to the Temple of the Lyrical Art of Nice, this junior formation ensures throughout the season the entire lyrical and symphonic program which evolves in the same way as the adult choir. In recent years, these children have been able to participate in numerous productions such as Carmen's Bizet, La Boheme, Tornado, and Tosca by Puccini, and the list of operatic credits goes on. Holder of several first prizes from the Conservatoire de Région de Marseille and the State Diploma in Artistic Education, Philippe Negrel leads a parallel career as an instrumentalist, choir master, and teacher. After having practiced in many French orchestras, he is now director of the Children's Choir of the Nice Opera, for which he develops the production and composition of many projects, and with whom he performs in Nice and in the region. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Children's Choir of the Nice Opera.
Give them a big cheer, everybody. Our wonderful choir this evening performing for our inaugural. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will have the traditional blessing of our beautiful ship. Please help me welcome to the stage our Rabbi Howard Apotheker. When we perform a naming as we do today, we, in a sense, bespeak the essence of that which we name. Onward in scripture is found when God wishes to foretell a better tomorrow. In speaking of the restoration of the fortunes of the people, the prophet Ezekiel says, this is a new day. From that time onward, I will pour out my spirit on the house of Israel. May onward's essence be that of new beginnings, of a pouring out of a renewed spirit, and may it be your will, O God, source of life, that you guide and direct this journey in well-being, that you sustain the officers and the crew in good health, that they may lead we their charges to their desired destinations. May our captain keep us from peril and bring us back home in safety and security. Bless the undertakings of all your children May they congregate together and enjoy this cruise together. And may whatever they do be a reflection of your will. And may they return with a deeper understanding of your world and of the human beings who inhabit it. And may they take greater delight. Look upon us then with grace and loving kindness and compassion, obliging your you, eternal one, God of all life, who is ever mindful of our prayer, now and onward into the future. Amen. And continuing with the ship's blessing, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage Father John McCrone. We pray God for his blessing upon this ship and upon all who will travel on her. We give thanks for those who built the ship, for those who designed and installed its equipment, and those who sail upon it. We pray especially for the captain and the crew and for all who run and maintain this vessel. May they all undertake May all that they undertake be in accordance, O oh God, with your will, supported always by your blessing. Wherever they travel, make them instruments of your peace. Show them your love always. O oh, eternal God, Lord of land and sea, be pleased to receive into your protection this, this, this vessel and all who will sail on her. Preserve them from all dangers at sea that they may return in safety to enjoy the blessings of the land. May they travel in peace, be of good courage, hold fast to what is good, render no evil for evil, strengthen them, support them always. May they help the afflicted, honor everyone, for in doing so, they honor you, our Creator God. And for all of us, we pray that the Lord will bless us and keep us, that he will let his face shine upon us and be gracious to us, and that he will grant all of us, here present and all who will sail, peace, peace in our world, peace in our lives, all the days of our life. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi, and thank you, Father, for blessing our beautiful ship. Ladies and gentlemen, music continues to inspire us and is always part of any event. 
And I am so deeply honored to have been asked to help put together some of that music this evening. And this next selection, uh, I speak, think, speaks volumes about what our world and the state of our world has been in. And when it comes to inspiration, I don't think there is anyone better who could have said in his words what we hope for today. Ladies and gentlemen, in the words of John Lennon and the music, this is Imagine.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage the president of Azamara, Carol Cabasis. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome. It's funny that they picked that song for me. <laughs> I'm glad they think I'm working hard. I'm sorry, I'm looking for my page. Here we are. We are honored to have all of you with us tonight. It is particularly special to have our loyalty guests participate in the christening of our newest ship. A christening is important because it is believed to bring good luck and safe travel to the vessel. In the maritime community, we hold close to traditions and a christening is one of the most important. So thank you for being part of such a special moment. There are many thanks I must give. We have all been tested these past couple of years, and I am exceedingly pleased to see where we are today. There is a combination of what I consider superheroes on shore and on board who have exemplified resilience and passion. Thanks to all their efforts, we have made it to this wonderful day. Together, we will take Azamara, Azamara further than our wildest dreams. For everyone on board, they're all around you, all of this wonderful crew. And for everyone here, it's all of our wonderful Shoreside team who is here with us today. And of course, our investors who have made all of this possible. And most of all, to our loyalty guests, thank you for trusting us with the most valuable treasure. Your time and travel experience. Time and again, you have sailed with us to distant lands, and it seems we have taken good care of you, allowing us the privilege of your visit to our ships again and again. That brings me to the great motivator for us here tonight, and that's the love of travel. I'll highlight the three main reasons travel is needed in our lives and why we sorely need it right now. First, travel connects. It connects people, places, and cultures. This connection increases understanding and appreciation for a place and a people we may not have known anything about. We may find there are things that are different and also things that may be exactly the same. Travel is an education. We are not just learning about destinations and cultures. We are learning humility, patience, resourcefulness, and gratitude among many other virtues we can all use. We are also learning a lot about ourselves along the way. Finally, travel gives us lasting happiness. Perhaps it results from seeing nature in its purest form during a game drive in a safari or participating in traditions that are centuries old with a Maori tribe in New Zealand. These experiences will last a lifetime and bring us joy each time we recall them. We have found a kindred spirit in another very important guest tonight. But before I get to this guest, I must describe another long-held tradition in seafaring history. This tradition is the designation of a godmother for a vessel. Why would a ship have a godmother? The idea is that a godmother 
brings a feminine benevolent spirit to the ship and protects future sailings. From our point of view, the more protection, the better. And who are we to question centuries of tradition? Of course, when we thought of the ideal protector of our ship, we wanted her not just to be an honorary bottle breaker, whose portrait will live on board. And speaking of portraits, we have a lovely portrait of her, which another lovely lady will be bringing up on stage. Thank you, Daniela, our lovely staff captain. We wanted to find someone who deeply appreciated our perspective on travel and shared similar beliefs. I'm pleased to say we found the perfect woman for this important role, Beth Santos. You will meet Beth in a moment, and she will share more about her mission and how her love of travel is now helping thousands of others. We saw the intersection between Beth's mission and ours being perfectly aligned and are looking forward to much collaboration in the future. With that, I would ask you to give a warm welcome to the godmother of Azamara Onward, Beth Santos. Well, I like my song, so that was good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carol, for that amazing introduction, and to the entire Azamara team for their incredible incredibly hard work and dedication, and of course for the immense honor of selecting me as godmother of the Azamara Onward. To everyone in attendance today, from press to guests and the greater Azamara community, to everybody up there, hi, <laughs> so fun. To our own wonderful women, to every crew member who's worked swiftly behind the scenes to make sure this event runs ever so smoothly, hello. I'm pleased to have a moment to tell you my story and to reflect on some of the lessons that I hope we can all take away from this to make ourselves not just better travel industry members, but better travelers. When Azamar approached me to be the godmother, I was floored. I suspect some of you are a little surprised too. When we look at the long lineage of cruise ship godmothers in the world today, we see celebrities like Oprah and royalty like Kate Middleton. We don't usually see a lot of entrepreneurs, and when we do, it's even rarer to see them outside of the cruise industry. But as I've come to know Azamara, I've learned that they like to shake things up a little bit, and I deeply admire that spirit and Carol's leadership. It's the ones who are willing to shake things up that will propel us all forward. When I started Wonderful nearly 13 years ago, I was traveling solo in my early 20s and logging it all in a travel blog. It was one of my very first forays into the world on my own, and it was exciting and invigorating and sometimes scary. I traveled through a world where sometimes it wasn't common or accepted to see a woman traveling on her own, and I learned quickly how much of the travel industry, many parts of the travel industry, don't always represent a deep diversity of travelers. It became my mission to build a global community that not only provided meaningful support and sisterhood for women traveling the world, but an international brand that challenged and pushed the travel industry to do better by all of the women affected by it. Today, Wonderful connects over 45,000 women in an online community in 50 chapters worldwide. We run the Wits Creator Summit, which brings together hundreds of travel content creators to explore the evolution of travel in a digital landscape. We host a festival called Wanderfest that invites women to simply celebrate sisterhood and the magic that travel gives us. And we honor women who are carving paths to a better future 
through the Bessie Awards. We speak up about topics that are important, not just to our industry, but to our world. Cultural awareness, social justice, responsibility, community-led tourism, and our role as travelers to invest in businesses that share those core values. It's not lost on me how symbolic today is. Not just because it's a christening, but because it's a christening after the two hardest years that the travel industry, and especially the cruise industry, has ever seen, possibly in the history of tourism. For two years, we stopped moving. And while we were all learning to bake sourdough bread and grow carrots in our gardens, there are a couple other things that really stood out too. The first is that we all realize that travel isn't just a destination, it's a mindset. It's not always about how far we go or how many passport stamps we acquire, but how much we let ourselves learn in the process. In quarantine, we came to find moments of travel that we never would have considered before. Cooking a homemade meal from an international cookbook and experimenting with flavors we'd never tasted taking walks and patches of our own cities and backyards that we'd never explored, picking up languages, and using the powers of the internet to connect across borders and time zones with new friends, finding moments of learning and growth even in the smallest things, taking the lessons that travel teaches us, getting uncomfortable, embracing new things, letting yourself be open to the world right at home. So many of us in the travel industry also took the great pause as a moment to reflect on our direction forward. We talked about new initiatives in tourism that we hoped could be more part of the future of travel, an industry that celebrated and promoted women, an industry that amplified black and brown voices, an industry that works to invest in and support local communities that immersed itself locally, that understood that travel isn't just about the traveler, but also about everyone who's touched by travel's impact. An industry that honored the importance of traveling with intention. It's that spirit of intention that brings us here today because christenings are not just about introducing a new ship into the world, but giving it a purpose and a path forward. For the ship, certainly, but also for all of us. We stand together after two years of pause. We take the lessons that we've learned, the hard ones and the easier ones, the ones that have made us laugh, the ones that have nearly broken us. But they've all played part in carving us into the people we are today. We pack them into our suitcases and we propel ourselves onward into a world that's better for all of us. Onward. Couldn't be more fitting, could it? So today, for all of you watching, whether you work in the industry, whether you're an Azamara guest or a wonderful woman, whether you're a member of the media sharing this moment with your audience, I'd like to leave you with a reflection, with a challenge. What lessons will you take with you when you prepare yourself, propel yourself onward? What intentions will you bring on your next voyage? How will you manifest them? However it is that you're part of the travel industry, whether you're a senior leader making corporate decisions, to a traveler just deciding on their next trip, we all have a responsibility to make travel better for all of us, to invest in businesses that share those values, to approach the world as learners and as advocates, to make travel impactful and equitable. This responsibility lies in each one of us. And today is the day that we're gonna act on those intentions. Because today, we press onward. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, our godmother, Beth Santos. And now, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the stage the master of the vessel, Captain Carl Smith, and our president, Carol Cabezas. I've been looking forward to these all day. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, um, throughout the millennia of maritime history, uh, the naming of a new ship has been accompanied by a ceremony of one form or another. Whether sacrificing oxen or sheep, to the use of wine, water, prayer, and our modern day favorite, champagne, all of these sacrifices are intended to invite good luck, both for the ship and for all who sail in her. As Carol said, the blessing of a godmother brings a benevolent spirit of a feminine type to uh, welcome our ship. I think we should all be grateful for any benevolent spirits, ladies and gentlemen, uh, certainly in this industry. Now, uh, hopefully you'll have noticed, I am carrying a very large set of scissors. Um, but what else would you use to cut a very large ribbon? Uh, the use of ceremonial scissors dates back over 120 years. These particular scissors, you like that? Uh, these particular scissors have been hand signed by all eight of Azamara's masters, all of us sharing the same goals and the teamwork behind them. Now, whilst researching my speech for this evening, I came across the following cautionary note. Ship launching imposes stresses on the ship not met during normal operation. There is a great deal of truth to that, um, but what I can honestly say personally and with complete certainty is that it imposes a great deal of stresses on the crew. <laughs> now, over the past 15 years, uh, I have been proud to sail of master on all four of Azamara's beautiful ships. The journey for a year, the quest for 10 years, pursued for around three, and now I've been on board this vessel for just over a year, ladies and gentlemen, the Azamara onward. In that time, I have become convinced that not only do we have the finest crew on the oceans, but we also <laughs> carry the finest guests. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all of you present in Monaco here this evening, on behalf of the ship's company, on behalf of our president, Carol Cabezas, I would like to invite our godmother, Beth Santos, to name our beautiful vessel. I name this ship Azamara Onward. May God bless her and all who sail on her.
gentlemen in the true fashion of Osamar bringing you local entertainment please give a big cheer for our grand finale and our wonderful musicians artists trapeze artists and our fire performers <laughs> ladies and gentlemen thank you for being a part of this historic moment in our beautiful ship. And ladies and gentlemen, may we also travel safely around the globe, ever onward on her. <laughs> and now ladies and gentlemen, before we uh, commence here with uh, the end of the program, just a couple of bits of housekeeping as I like to call it, ladies and gentlemen, because we know after 20 minutes, history has proven that people are often peckish after not having food at that point in time. So we don't want to have a mass exodus going, but rather we have wonderful people here that are going to be assisting you, and we are going to be having you go out uh, by rows. So please wait your turn, and you will be advised when to go because we have the one gangway, and it's all coordinated in your benefit. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being a part of this historic event, and we'll see you on board. Bon voyage! Thank you. 